Hello everyone, my name is Loïc Barbeau. I'm going to uh, give you an update on what's happening in the world of PIMS. I'm going to start with some general information about PIMS, uh, a little bit of info about PIMS uh, 1.2, then we're going to transition to uh, other activities and uh, a tiny bit about the future of PIMS. Okay. And let's start with some uh, history. Um, so FIMS was uh, really created in uh, 2009, it's already six years old. Uh, one of the first major milestones that we had was the release of FIMS 1.07 in uh, 2011. That included the capture, transfer and transform interface. At, uh, in 2012, FIMS received uh, uh, this very same, co co very same conference, IBC, the uh, Innovation Award. Uh, 2014, uh, the release of the Themes 1.1 version that included the repository interface as well as the REST flavor of all of the theme interfaces. And I'm announcing today that Themes 1.2 is being released. Uh, that will include time code uh, that will be covered um, a little bit in more details further down in the presentations, as well as the QA interface and the service capabilities. Okay. So, who is involved in FIMS? Well, there's a long list of um, um, members uh, that keeps growing um, uh, within FIMS. Uh, the first category of members that we have is the FIMS Business Board. Uh, so that's basically a list that is uh, limited to media organization. Okay. The second uh, uh, group that we have is what we call the technical board. Uh, and that's for media organization as well as uh, van van media vendors. Uh, I'm sure that you recognize a lot of the names uh, on that spreadsheet. It is free to join FIMS. I want to insist on that. You don't have to pay anything. Uh, in fact, uh, to join the technical board member, the only thing that you have to sign is a, uh, an IPO statement that is uh, quite general. A uh, little bit of more information about um, the FIMS uh, groups. Um, so we have uh, subgroups uh, within the technical boards uh, that are really allocated to work on, uh, the subgroups are created to uh, work on very specific projects. Uh, the group contains today 263 members uh, and it is divided uh, uh, in a different subgroup. The first one is the Architecture Council that is really uh, the brain when it comes to uh, uh, designing uh, uh, themes and keeping themes uh, um, to keeping themes in sync to its core vision, uh, the themes repository team, the themes automated metadata extractions, uh, the themes QA that has pretty much completed that job, the themes uh, semantic that is a new team that we're creating. Uh, the film stream that is also a brand new team that uh, that we are creating and the film test platform uh, that is uh, just starting as well uh, right now films 1.2 overview okay so as i stated it is completed it is publicly available you can actually download it today okay. so the first part of the films 1.2 is the qa interface Okay, so what does it fit? Well, within FIMS 1.1, uh, you have the ability to uh, ingest content, to transform content, to transfer content, and to store it using the repository interface. Now you have the ability to uh, QC that content, so you can embed that service uh, pretty much at any step of your media workflow. In the existing, uh, in the current diagram, I added it at two different steps, right after the encoding and right after the transcoding step. Okay. The FIMS QA interface uh, was designed, was developed uh, as a joint effort with uh, EBU. Um, and all the work that was done uh, within the uh, EBU QC uh, project, um, where the, the EBU QC code had been created, well, all of that is available within the FIMS QA interface. How you define a job within FIMS QA is by leveraging those, uh, those codes. The time code project now, okay. uh, a very important part of FIMS uh, 1.2. So up to now, 
all of the actions that you will do within FIMS will be on the on an entire asset. You had no ways of basically doing an operations on a, a, a support of that asset. Well, within FIMS 1.2, that's not available. Uh, you can do partial. You can do a. Uh, QA on partial content. You can retrieve a set of frames within an instance as part of the repository interface. Uh, you can transfer also a set of frames of a given asset. In terms of transcoding, uh, this is where you s there's a lot. This is this is the interface that has a lot most benefit within the introduced by the Teams 1.2. You can do clip stitching. You can do clip extractions. Uh, there's also notions of light EDL that is supported within films. Um, the transfer, and when it comes to, uh, as I said, a uh, repository, well, it gives you the ability to deal with essences um, uh, by dealing with a, set, with a subset of that, uh, of that content. Okay. The last big uh, update that we've made to films 1.2 in terms of adding new functionality is with the service capability registry. Within the FIMS repository interface, we had introduced something that we call the RCR, that was the repository capability registry. Well, what we've done in here is that we standardize all of the work that we had done for a very specific service. Uh, and we also expanded it by leveraging um, a standard that is outside of FIMS, that is 702071, uh, aka MDCF. Uh, media device controller framework. Uh, and what that allows us to do is to easily describe all of the operations and the capabilities of a given theme service. As part of Teams 1.2, uh, we have created the, uh, that version of that service for the Teams QA interface. The intention is that we will be doing that for all of the existing Teams interface as well as all of the future ones. Yeah. So where can you get FIMS 1.2? Here's the link. Uh, right now it is currently hosted on the FIMS, uh, on the FIMS, on the EBU FTP server. We are looking at uh, making it available in the future on GitHub. Uh, there's going to be more news coming up in the next couple of days and weeks about that. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about the other activities. Okay. FIMS 1.2 is one thing. There's actually a lot of other things happening with FIMS. Okay. Well, the first one is a new interface. Uh, this project has started a while ago, uh, but there's good progress being made on that. It's around automated metadata extractions. Okay. So that's about doing semantic analysis of content and extracting that metadata from that content. Uh, there's an alignment with Sky that is also an EBU sponsor project in terms of defining the type of uh, metadata extraction that is being made. Uh, so those two projects uh, are progressing together. We expect to get some um, uh, good designs and good output in the next couple of weeks and months. Okay. The expectation is that for, is for that interface to be released as part of Teams 1.3. Okay. Implementation guidelines. Okay. So that's an effort that is being done by leveraging the FIMS repository interface. Uh, we have listened to feedback from FIMS implementer. They want to understand in a better way what they should and shouldn't do around FIMS. Well, we've created a theory of webcast that explains to you in a very easy way what you should and shouldn't do. Um, those webcasts cover several topics. Uh, the goal is to expand the number of webcasts that we have for the FIMS repository interface and apply the same model for all of the other FIMS interfaces. Okay. The repository interface version 2. Okay. So that's um, a project uh, that has started. Okay. Uh, so the group has been, uh, has been uh, augmented in terms of new members have joined the FIMS repository team to uh, focus on that next version. Uh, we actually have already defined something that is uh, described as the FIMS object relationship. Uh, that is a new concept in FIMS, uh, and expect to uh, for the for the 
uh, the individuals that, that are members of the Think Technical Board. Uh, we expect to have some communications coming in the next couple of weeks uh, to the entire Films Dev Reflector about the type of relationship that we want to create as it will affect every single one, every single interfaces within Films. The film test framework. So this is also um, um, something that uh, we st we're just starting. Okay. We uh, um, the group has been uh, has been formed. A lead has been selected. Okay. Juice River from Gluskas is sitting in the corner over there. Um, more information will be communicated around that uh, that project in the next couple of uh, days and weeks. Uh, tomorrow, during the Films Technical Board meeting, we'll talk a little bit about we'll talk a little bit more about this in details. Uh, if you want to join that exciting project, there's still time to do so. So send an email to, the, uh, to, to, uh, to myself or one of the teams reflector, and we will add you to that, to that list. Yeah. The next one is the Films Developer Community slash Open Source. Uh, we are working very hard on opening Films to the way standards are being developed today. Open source is something that a lot of people uh, understand well, uh, know how to deal with, and we want to align things with, uh, with those type of concepts. So also around that one, there will be uh, uh, some communication coming out in the next couple of weeks in terms of how we're going to do that exactly. Okay. Film semantic metadata. So this particular project is to evaluate uh, in this first step a uh, concept uh, that exists outside of the typical media asset presentation and to apply them to media. Uh, concept of RDF, uh, triple store, uh, so it's around metadata. Uh, those type of uh, designs can provide a lot of flexibility in terms of how you deal with metadata. Uh, but we al they also uh, may introduce some complexity. So we're trying to define the proper balance between adding the, the flexibility uh, that RDF will bring and the complexity in order to properly deal with those object representations within media workflow. Okay? Uh, there's an evaluation that is being done now. The, um, uh, the output of that evaluation will be communicated in the next couple of weeks as well, post IBC. Films and growing content, uh, another one of those very important projects. So that just starting, uh, a lead has been selected that is uh, Roger Sassiloto from Avid. Uh, and this, this particular project has to do with enabling films to have the ability to deal with content that is growing. So uh, you know, how do you do transcoding when a file is being encoded? How do you do an edit on content that is being ingested within your repository? Well, the work being done then by team will be able to answer all those questions. Okay. So we're just starting on that. Uh, same comment I made about the film test and the film test and, and, and platform. If you want to join a project, there's still time to do so. Okay. Film and the foundation standard. So this is not a full-blown project. It is at this point more of a proof of concept that we're putting together. And it is the ability for films uh, to better support uh, other standards. We know that films uh, will not be the only standard that will exist in the media space. We wish it would be, but that's not going to be the case. So in order to properly make it work with all the existing standards, there's things that we could do that we allow for everyone who deals with those multiple standards to properly make them work together. Okay. Uh, there's actually a prototype that has been created uh, that will be reviewed post IBC. Okay. For more information about films, okay, uh, there's several links that you can follow. The first one is the technical information is a wiki website. The second one is marketing information that's on the themes.tv. The implementation guidelines are on YouTube. 
on the Themes YouTube channel. Okay. Subscribe to it, uh, and you will get all of the new updates that are posted pretty much on a weekly basis now. And if you and actually there's an error in that slide here. The last the last item is not implementation guideline, but it's if you are, if you still have questions, well, send an, e an email to the Themes admin distribution list or send me an email personally. Thank you.